Welcome to the broadcast. There has been much concern about climate change and how it affects our lives. There's the warmer than normal greenhouse gas temperatures, which lead to melting ice caps and flooding around the world. The global ramifications remain difficult to grasp unless you see it firsthand with your own eyes. There may be no more alarming evidence of global warming and its human impact than the melting ice pack around the U.S. state of Alaska. America's now correspondent Mike Kirsch recently navigated his way to its remote bush country. It's home to roughly 130,000 Native Americans inhabiting some 200 centuries old villages. People widely considered the human barometers for how troubling climate change has become. Native American Mike Williams says he was an alcoholic well into his 30s, going sober only after all six of his brothers, one by one, drank themselves to death. That was 25 years ago. His therapy to this day, dog mushing across Alaska, listening to songs of melancholy through an old set of speaker phones wrapped around his head. Darling, let's turn back the year. For a quarter of a century now mushing across rivers of ice, he's witnessed firsthand what he calls the wrath of global warming. The ice is thinner and traveling is very dangerous and uh, more frequent um, uh, accidents uh, going through thin ice. Williams says the impact of climate change on him and other members of the Yupik tribe in remote southwestern Alaska go all but unnoticed by the outside world because few outsiders have ever been here. America's now recently set out for that desolate place in a small bush plane. Our flight canceled due to low visibility by a low ceiling of fog brought on, our pilot tells us, from an unusual warm front that's moved in during what is supposed to be the dead of winter. The only alternative is to drive on a river that I'm told should be frozen enough to hold the weight of our vehicle. How thick is the ice on this river? Three feet. Three feet? Yeah. The Kuskokoom River, as it's known, normally frozen solid straight across this time of year, is with warmer temperatures now thawing on the edges. Few people from the villages along the river risk driving it. There have been recent reports of snowmobiles, or what locals call snow machines, falling through the ice. One such brush with death recently happened to Nelson Canuck. We heard the ice cracking right under us, and um, it was a very frightening feeling. The evidence of climate change, it's everywhere through uh, river erosion and also frequent flooding. Evidence of climate change that Canuck says people living in urban areas around the world probably don't experience as vividly as indigenous people in Alaska. He says to understand the impact and the context of climate change here, one must first know the history of this place and his people. Since migrating here from Siberia three millennia ago, Yupik people to this day spend much of their lives outdoors a traditionally independent, self-reliant people struggling to survive from a subsistence culture of hunting and trapping for moose and beaver and other game, and fishing rivers for salmon to feed themselves. What began as a fairly peaceful life here, a culture and legacy once shared by most Native American tribes in the U.S., was rocked over time by a series of tumultuous events. Decades before the onset of climate change, the Yupik culture was adversely impacted by the arrival of white settlers who brought disease and alcohol, a totally different way of life during the emerging industrial age in the late 1800s. Then, 40 years ago, the Yupik centuries-old claims to land and fishing rights, claims shared by all Native Alaskans, were forfeited when the U.S. Congress, in efforts to exploit land in Alaska for oil and other resources, devised a plan to effectively buy out the land claims of indigenous tribes here through the Alaskan Native Claims Settlement Act under the Nixon administration, which ultimately created 13 native regional for-profit corporations that are reportedly only paying each tribal member here, or so-called corporate shareholders, an average yearly dividend of $600, not the windfall people here say they were promised it would be, nor have they seen increased job opportunities as promised turning a once fiercely proud and independent people into impoverished, dependent wards of the federal welfare system. 
that's given rise to a culture of depression, alcoholism, and drug abuse, and to a suicide rate higher than the national average, 14% higher, say tribal elders like Mike Williams. Our young people are killing themselves, they're hanging themselves in the trees, they're um, shooting themselves. Historical trauma, the alcohol, the domestic violence. Case in point says Williams is the recent death of his second cousin, Lena, a 52-year-old mother and grandmother from what family members say was an apparent overdose on depression medication. I'm at the airport. We were with Williams and other family members as they picked up the casket containing her body to return it to the family home for a wake after it was flown back here from an autopsy conducted in Anchorage, the closest major city. Williams says his cousin Lena was a Yupik woman who'd been battling alcoholism and depression for years, brought on, he says, by the bleak reality of life for indigenous people here. Climate change now, says Williams, in a way, the nail in the coffin. The final indignity suffered by Native Americans here. Through the rapid change impacts, I have seen um, increase in um, um, the suicides. Increased levels of stress, anxiety and depression, and suicides here, he claims, brought on in part by global warming. From rising coastal and river waters that have claimed entire villages, and that's not all. Villagers say for the last several years now, salmon runs through the river here in late spring have been running low, which is a concern because salmon, they say, is the primary food source here. The majority here are unemployed, living off government welfare, and can rarely afford store-bought food like ground beef. How much is ground beef? It's about $19. $19 a pound for ground beef. No wonder you guys eat fish. Yeah. Just how long it might be before the salmon they eat vanish, along with the other fish they depend on, like whiting, is anybody's guess. Our families have lived here in these areas for hundreds of years, even thousands of years. And this is where we practice our traditional ways of life, of being who we are as uh, Yupik or other cultures in the state. Kunuk has a public service film on the internet about global warming threatening nature and his family's way of life. This is our grocery store. He's also filed an environmental lawsuit against the state of Alaska in hopes that it will officially recognize climate change is happening and to do something about it. To basically save our future. A future recently made more uncertain for Yupik children here when a lower court judge promptly rejected Nelson Canuck's lawsuit. No, the government is doing nothing uh, on the issue of climate change. Maybe some, but... Mike Williams says state and federal government must pass tougher environmental laws urgently if there is any hope of reducing harmful levels of carbon emissions released into the Earth's atmosphere. Greenhouse gases he blames for images like these, for example, recently filmed in Alaska's largest city, Anchorage. Unheard of rain and flooding in January, a period when the city should be in a deep freeze. And here outside Alaska's capital, Juneau, there is the accelerated melting of the famed Mendenhall Glacier, the recession of the brilliant winter blue ice field retreating almost two miles in the last 50 years, one of the most alarming indicators, scientists say, of global warming and climate change.